morning, everyone. I'm Maxine Fakara. I'm Praxisaurus CEO, and I'm delighted to be talking today to Dr. Ian Thomas and Dr. Simon Haslam, two of the expert practitioners who've helped to create our new leadership program. A very warm welcome to both of you. Thank you. Hello, Maxine. Hello. Hi, Maxine. Thank you. So Ian, as well as being our new Praxis Oral Chair, is head of Cambridge Enterprises Life Sciences team, working in fields as diverse as therapeutics and agritech. Ian's been an active trainer on several Praxis Oral courses, and he's also served as chair of our Professional Development Committee. Simon is an independent consultant with over 20 years of experience as a strategy consultant and change facilitator, working with senior leaders around the world. He's also a visiting professor at Durham University Business School, leading the strategic management module on their global MBA. So we're going to be talking today about the new Praxis Oral Leadership Programme. And perhaps I can come to you first, Ian. Why has this course been developed? Well, KE has a long and illustrious uh, history in this country. It's been going 20, 30, may some would argue 40 years, but it's become much more professional um, in the last couple of decades. And that's been driven by a very significant solid group of people um, across a number of institutions in this country and they've really stuck together well really pushed a number of very important um, agendas and been very successful in building the standing of KE. Now I think what we now have is a world where the volume of K that's going on has exploded massively, which is fantastic. Um, the number of forms that that has taken has hugely diversified. And it's also become hugely more important on the national and university agendas. So we need so many more people doing it and so many more people who can take leadership positions in that. Now, leadership is something that is you know, not unique to KE, but nevertheless, there are some very specific things and specific uh, bits of information and, and, and ways of working that may be particularly relevant in this sector, So, which, which, have ne which we're not aware of any training for. And we thought that it would be very important to provide that training, but all, uh, not only for existing leaders, but really for up and coming leaders to give people that confidence to take over where the first group of people who've done a brilliant job in KE are starting to move into retirement or to other roles. Um, this is about future planning for our sector. It's about caring for that sector. Yeah. And, and Simon, did, did you want to, to comment uh, in terms of why the programme was put together? Just in relation to pick up Ian's comment about leadership positions, I think uh, there, there can be assumption in some quarters that people figure out how to lead. And with leadership <laughs> positions, it's not just the person sitting right at the top of the organisation who leads. We, we lead from any level and in any context. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what we're doing in terms of the programme is hoping accelerate our ability to make a difference in the right way uh, by just focusing on, on leadership skills in the context. And I, I think that is something, as Ian said, which is, which is distinctive yeah. about what we offer. Yes. So, so Ian, let me come back to you. You mentioned the, sort of the, the particular context of knowledge exchange. And so what do, you think, what do you think those challenges look like, particularly for the next generation of leaders in knowledge exchange? I think um, it's predominantly driven by the importance and visibility of this activity, which is legitimately uh, wished for by a huge number of stakeholders. And I think that statement itself tells you where some of those challenges lie, because there are a huge diversity of stakeholders, often with not fully aligned agendas. And the vast majority of those are outside your institution where you work or a very significant number outside the institution where you work and consequently you are juggling more forces than you might consider yourself doing in other in other situations obviously in, i guess if you're in politics it's, it, it, it's very <laughs> similar but this isn't and i think that requirement to juggle those those different stakeholders in a very sensitive way where you don't necessarily have all the levers to, yeah. uh, to to get the things that you need done done but you need to influence effectively, I think is where there's a, a, a particular challenge. So let me come back to you then, Simon. Um, could you talk a little bit about what you think that we see the difference between leadership and, and management as? Maxine, thank you. I think there's just a handful of key differences and uh, 
the unification is they're both about resources. So it's all about the in the individual looking after the collective pool of resources. But um, mm -hmm. I think one difference is that when you look at management, um, the resources pool is very broad. So you, you can manage real estate, you can manage a budget, uh, you can manage a workforce. But when it comes to resources and leadership, there's only one resource that is under the spotlight, which is people. So leadership is entirely a human activity. It's all about the relationships between people. Um, the second is um, about style and maybe codification. And there's often a best practice in management. So if, if, if one becomes a project manager, uh, there are certain rules that when followed will probably get to you a good place. Uh, so management is very much um, a game of efficiency. This is how you do it. And if you follow the rules, it will turn out pretty well. Whereas leadership takes a slightly different angle, which is it's more about effectiveness. And there might not be one consistent way of doing. Uh, so for a leader to be effective, she or he has to exercise judgment. So if I'm working with this bunch of people and we're trying to accomplish something, what should be my style at a moment in time? And that's going to vary context to context. So if management is all about efficiency, leadership, I think, is more about effectiveness and the use of judgment and style. And the third difference, I think, is to do with um, how organizations view it. You, you can appoint somebody to a position of management. So she or he could get the position of XYZ status in the organization. Uh, they get the budget, they get the reports into them, and they can manage that. So you have organizational status and power. But with leadership, Anybody can lead, providing one thing, they want to. Hmm. You can't appoint anybody to position of leadership. You can give them organizational hierarchy, but that doesn't mean they've got the appetite to lead. So for me, leadership is very much um, an inwardly driven appetite to want to make a difference. Um, so the difference is the resource focus. Leadership is entirely a human one. Uh, leadership is effectiveness rather than efficiency and leadership is voluntarily wishing to make a difference rather than the organization pointing to so i think they're the three th key things really interesting thank you okay so um perhaps it would be good to just talk a bit about um the course itself and how that's going to run are we are we planning to build a community around that course i'm assuming there'll be ongoing support ian can i come to you no no very definitely i think first maybe start with reminding people this is actually, uh, it's not a, a tiny course, but it's a, a, a small group of people that we'll be working with. So uh, we're hoping that everyone gets to know everybody else pretty well over the duration of the course. But beyond that, um, and, so, and, and support themselves, but beyond that, we hope to be using Praxis Oral's um, platform, digital platform to set conversations going. And I think the beauty about that is it's with a small group, it becomes much more intimate. And of course, the, the, the various people supporting the course, Simon, me, Sue, Paul, Alistair, um, uh, will all be getting involved with that. So a huge amount of support there. And of course, we'll, because you know, there's a, such a discrete group of people, we look forward to engaging with people if they have particular challenges or particular comments they wish to bring to us or questions. We're always going to be open to that. But also during the course, there'll be some catch up sessions where people, you know, can, people can drop in. They won't be obliged to, but we'll be there to have those conversations and, and just, just chat or, or provide more specific input. And of course, we expect those sessions to give rise to possibly specific outcomes as well. So absolutely, but it doesn't stop at the end of the course. It goes on after that. Um, and, and actually it's about introducing people into the greater community, giving them more uh, opportunities to, to volunteer and support that community in the way that Simon just said, because they want to make a difference, yes. because yeah. they're self-driven, because they see there's value to this beyond ticking some sort of objective that their current organization and boss set them. Mm. Yes, very, very much so. So, OK, well, we're, we're sort of we're coming to the close, really. But I thought it would be quite nice to just hear from each of you um, what inspires you about, you know, is there a leader that inspires you? I mean, the world is made up of many different types of and styles of leaders. T tell us tell us about somebody who who you feel, you know, that you look up to. Can I, Maxine, just pick this one up first <laughs> before Ian steals my thunder on terms of maybe a nomination? <laughs> but uh, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a slightly different answer. 
um, but a few years ago, I was involved in a, writing a book about leadership, and we did sort of uh, give specific examples, including photographs and biographies of certain leaders, uh, five of them in particular. Uh, and on the second edition, two of them had to disappear. Um, <laughs> and th the point is that leadership is very human, and there are leaders that really excel at a moment in time for certain things. But that doesn't mean to say that she or he is the perfectly rounded character in a flawless way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm probably more inclined to think about there, there are certain characteristics of leaders that I admire, uh, which would be the ability to take responsibility, the ability to be great at communicating, uh, the, the ability to be influential off the back of that communication, um, and, and the ability, I mean, the phrase is, is often used is to step up to put oneself forward to, to, to be helpful in the context. Um, and with that, uh, as people are different, the way that leaders do that is different because of personality and also because of context. So um, I'm probably more admiring of a point in time rather than an, in, an individual. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lame answer from me. So I'll give you an example. You'll be probably editing this in a couple of years time. <laughs> Ian, yes. what's, your, well, I, what's your thinking? You know, interesting, I couldn't agree more, um, but I will give you some names and some reasons um, because I think that that, that will interest people. Uh, but I think it's entirely right about time. Um, and I think it's about specific characteristics that, are, that I find admirable. So in a sort of in vaguely historical order, I mean, you can look at Shackleton and you know, his perilous situation on the Antarctic ice shelf and what he did to get his team, his crew out of that was not only bold, intelligent, but stunningly brave and hugely physically committed. I mean, unbelievable. And then you, you can move on and you can look at you know, times like you know, Churchill's famous. I, mean, I found Churchill fascinating all my life. He deeply flawed character, but he was the right moment or a very significantly important person who was at the right moment for him. And he did things which most people could never do and you may never find a leader at that time for but then you know you, you get to modern times I mean, there's there's uh, people like mandela i mean unbelievable but his grace his forgiveness his compassion you know stunning i mean what more can you say and then there's some sort of quieter people like you know, nobel laureate from guatemala rigoberto menchu you know she's not you know, a global name or whatever and she's you know, well known in central america but she came from a situation where she had no power and she changed things for indigenous people in that country, which is she just wanted to make change and she would, she battled everything, you know, her, her culture, her gender, um, her indigenousness, which didn't help. But beware what you want, beware who you who respect. I mean, one of the people I really uh, admired for a very, very long time, and I thought she did a fantastic job, was Aung San Suu Kyi. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, difficult in current situation despite the difficulties in her country right now which have added to that to really think she's been a great leader over some very critical issues so it's about moments in time but i was prepared to name some people that i've always thought <laughs> fascinating and interesting and i've admired many characteristics about them so i'm not sure you got the answer in quite the name one person you wanted from either of us but hopefully people found that interesting really fascinating thank you both so much really useful to have um your insights today um thank you again um the course is running in two parts starting uh, with the 19th uh, to the 22nd of April, and then part two from the 22nd to the 23rd of June. If you'd like any more information about what's going to be included in the course, do go and have a look at our website or feel free to get in touch with us at training at praxisoral.org.uk. But hope to see you, hope to see you soon. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.